So now we want to look at hydride reductions, and we looked at hydride reductions for both ketones and aldehydes and how they were reduced to alcohols. Uh, and we're going to see a similar pattern to what we saw with organometallics with our carboxylic acids and derivatives, is that they have the chance to potentially react twice. Uh, now we're going to start with sodium borohydride more just to get it off our plate, but here's sodium borohydride, and one of these hydride ions can break off. So, and attack the carbonyl. So, and we find out that initially it's just going to do nucleophilic substitution. So, I'm not going to show the whole mechanism here because it's similar to what we've already shown for nucleophilic acid substitution. But, end result is you're going to have a hydrogen replacing the chlorine. But because now you have an aldehyde, we learned that, oh, you can reduce ketones and aldehydes with sodium borohydride. It'll react again and you can't stop it. You're simply just going to go all the way to the alcohol as your product. So, and it turns out, uh, sodium borohydride is the less reactive of your two hydride reagents. You've also got lithium aluminum hydride as your other common one. Uh, and so it, for sodium borohydride, it, yes, it'll reduce ketones and aldehydes. So, but out of the carboxylic acids and acid derivatives, it's only going to reduce acid halides and anhydrides. It's not going to reduce esters or amides or nitriles or any of those. But here's the rub. Even though it will reduce acid halides and anhydrides, we just way more commonly use lithium aluminum hydride for those anyways. And so, yes, it'll work for the acid chloride, and yes, it'll work for the anhydride, but you're probably never going to use it to do so. So I'm just covering my bases. Let's get NaBH4 out of the way because lithium aluminum hydride is really going to be our workhorse in this chapter. So now we'll take a look at lithium aluminum hydride. And as just a reminder, sometimes we also abbreviate it as LAH. Same diff here. Uh, and with lithium aluminum hydride, we learned it reduces ketones and aldehydes, just like sodium borohydride. But we're also going to find out that it'll reduce every single one of the carboxylic acids derivatives, whether it be acid halides and hydrides, esters, carboxylic acids themselves, amides or nitriles. It will reduce all of them. Uh, and not always the same reaction. We'll see a couple oddballs there, but most of the time, uh, very similar fashion, getting alcohol. So if we look at with the acid chloride here, so here we've got the aluminum hydrogen bond more polar than the boron hydrogen bond, and therefore more reactive. One of these is going to break off one of these hydrides and come and attack. Kick the electrons up to the oxygen and do our standard kind of nucleophilic addition reaction. So we now have got this negative charge out on this oxygen. We've attached a hydrogen. We still have the chlorine leaving group. And again, rather than doing addition, just like with the organometallics, these electrons come right back down and kick off the leaving group. And as a result, we now have an aldehyde. And again, we learned that aldehydes can also be reduced uh, by LaLH4, so you can't stop right here. It's going to go towards uh, all the way to the alcohol. So we'll add a second equivalent right here and get the alcohol. Uh, in this case, it turns out we have a slightly different reagent here. So, and if I want to stop at the aldehyde, instead of trying to add just like one equivalent, which doesn't really work, uh, we have a bulky uh, hydride reagent, which is lithium tri tbutoxy aluminum hydride. And so in this case, you've got your aluminum group bonded to a bunch of these guys. So, and this bulky reagent only reacts once. And so it's simply going to do nucleophilic substitution, replace the chlorine with the hydrogen, and you can stop at the aldehyde. We'll find out that this specific reagent works for acid chlorides and anhydrides, but not for any of the other carboxylic acid derivatives. So with an acid chloride, and we'll find out with an anhydride, I've got two options. If I use lithium aluminum hydride, it'll go all the way to a primary alcohol. If I use this new bulky hydride reagent, it'll stop at the aldehyde. Now, acid and hydrides work exactly the same way as the acid chlorides. Uh, in this case, the only difference is you just have a different leaving group, this big carboxylate. And it's not as good of a leaving group, so these aren't as reactive, but the reactivity here uh, ends up being the same uh, due to our reagents. So with lithium aluminum hydride, you go all the way to a primary alcohol. And with your bulky uh, hydride reagent, lithium tri tbutoxy aluminum hydride, you get the aldehyde instead. Exactly the same as we saw with acid chlorides. So now we move on to carboxylic acids, and lithium aluminum hydride will also reduce them down to a primary alcohol, just like we saw with acid chlorides and anhydrides. Uh, and we might think, oh yeah, so it does the first step, and it does nucleophilic substitution, makes an aldehyde, and then it reacts again, so forming the primary alcohol. And it all looks like it matches up perfectly, except the mechanism is completely different. It actually doesn't work this way at all. Uh, but the mechanism is not super important here. I'm not going to take the time to cover it. It's not something you're usually on the hook for uh, in most typical classes. So 
uh, but just know that it is different than typically the nucleophilic substitution followed by nucleophilic addition pattern we saw earlier. Um, so that's lithium aluminum hydride. Sodium borohydride won't touch your carboxylic acid. However, we do have another option over here, and that's using borane here. So BH3THF uh, will also reduce a carboxylic acid to a primary alcohol. And obviously, we saw this use with both alkenes and alkynes for doing anti Markovnikov hydration. Uh, but in this case, it's just a reduction to the primary alcohol from a carboxylic acid. But what's nice here is that this is selective for a carboxylic acid. It won't react with the other uh, acyl groups. It won't react with like uh, your esters or your amides or any of the others. It's selective for the carboxylic acid. So now we'll move on to esters and lithium hydride will work for those as well. And again, sodium borohydride won't touch them. Uh, but we are going to break this bond right here and we're going to replace our leaving group originally with a hydrogen in step one. So back to our general pattern, we'll do nucleophilic substitution first and then we'll do nucleophilic addition to form the alcohol. Now the big thing that's going to be different here though is that our leaving group is going to be an alkoxide and we're also going to form an alkoxide and then we have H3O plus and it protonates both of them forming not just one alcohol but two alcohols, our leaving group's a second alcohol. So since our major product on the carboxyl side is an alcohol and the leaving group's an alcohol, in this one instance, we suggest you keep track of both. And so we'll form two alcohols. The only time we wouldn't form two alcohols is if we form two identical alcohols. So some predict the products questions that can get a little bit trickier when you have like a cyclic ester or something like that and you end up with a diol instead. Uh, one other thing for esters is we've got our own special bulky reagent that's specific for esters, uh, and that's what we call DIBA, so diisobutyl aluminum hydride. So diisobutyl aluminum hydride here. So you've got an aluminum bonded to an isobutyl group, an isobutyl group, and then just one hydrogen. That's DIBA. And DIBA here, again, specific for esters, will let you stop at the aldehyde. It's not reactive with aldehydes, hence the stop. You might also see DIBA here, also abbreviated DIBOL for diisobutyl aluminum hydride, or sometimes even more completely DIBOL H for diisobutyl aluminum hydride. But DIBA is kind of the most common, so that's the one I'm including there. Um, but just be aware you might see it in one of these other two ways as well. So with esters, we've also got a way to go all the way to the primary alcohol or to stop at the aldehyde as well. All right, so the last two acyl groups we'll look at will be the amides and nitriles. And we'll find out that they are functionally distinct, different than the other reductions we see with lithium aluminum and hydride. So if we kind of take a look here with amides, we're gonna still do the nucleophilic attack uh, by one of the hydride ions in step one. We'll have now attached a hydrogen. So, and normally we'd say, okay, bring these electrons down and kick the amine off. Problem is, is that that would leave a negative charge on a nitrogen. Right now we have a negative charge on the oxygen, which is better. And so oxygen's like, hey, I'm gonna bring these electrons back down and amide get ready to leave. And the amide's like, uh, you're a better leaving group than I am. How about we figure out a way to make you leave? And ultimately that's what happens. And you don't have to know the mechanism here. I'm not gonna cover it. Uh, so, but the oxygen ends up leaving rather than the nitrogen. And so your product ends up being an amine instead of an alcohol. Uh, and that's the big rub here. So complete deoxygenation here. So don't be confused here. This is not like the Clemenson reduction or the wolf kishner reduction, which are specific to ketones and aldehydes. Those are also complete deoxygenations of a carbonyl, but for ketones and aldehydes, this one is specific to the amide turning into an amine. So finally, we have the reaction of lithium aluminum hydride with uh, our nitrile in this case. And so I've drawn one of these out and we're gonna have one of the hydrates break off. And rather than attacking the carbonyl carbon of, a, uh, of an acyl group, it's gonna attack the carbon that's triple bonded to the nitrogen instead. So, and that's as much of the mechanism as I really wanna show, but you can kinda see after this step that we'd end up with a double bond to nitrogen. We'd now have a bond to hydrogen as well. So, and we'd end up with a negative charge here. So, and mechanistically from here on out, how you actually get here is not important. Uh, not something you're usually on the hook for, but I just wanna kinda show you how to get this started to kinda reason it out in your head. So, but eventually we will end up turning this into an amine. And so, turns out amides and nitriles both get reduced to amines.